I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Friday, June the 21st, brought to you in part by To Leave by Norbrook. To Leave is a generic Draxon from Norbrook that is highly effective, a broad spectrum antibiotic for the treatment of BRD, pink eye and foot rot, among others. For more information, go to norbrook.com. Feeding our troops fake meat. Uh, it, I can't say that it surprises me, but really, can we not get rid of this Magoo administration any faster? Uh, it, I mean, I know we can see it. It's just, it's just we're right at the cusp of getting rid of all this woke crap. But, uh, but it seems like the closer we get, uh, the farther it is away. And uh, it's just one thing and then another. It's, it's uh, electric vehicles uh, being mandated. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, uh, you know, one thing and then another. But this woke crap is wearing me out. I don't know about you. But, uh, you know, it's bad enough we've got transgenders uh, in the military, which, uh, you know, I guess, you know, if you're, if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, uh, uh, but, you know, if, if the shit goes down in a foxhole, I want to be able to count on the guy next to me. I don't want to be worrying about whether he's checking his false eyelashes or not. But now, uh, with recruitment down big, morale down big, uh, the Pentagon uh, is funding a company uh, that is seeking proposals for fake, mo fake meat to reduce the CO2 footprint. Reduce the CO2 footprint. Okay. It seemed like President Magoo uh, had his wife with him. They flew over to Europe uh, and then she flew back from Europe uh, to go to her stepson's uh, 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 trial there and then flew back to Europe and then back. Okay, but we're worried about the CO2 footprint on the, the fighting uh, troops that protect us. You know, there's there's only one thing uh, that that we have the, those the military for, uh, and that is to to destroy things and to kill people. And I think you need to be running on uh, full protein to take care of both of those things. If you're protecting me, uh, damn straight, I want you to have as good a meal as you can have. Uh, I don't want you to have uh, some some mashed up peas uh, with some liquid smoke and salt poured over. But it, it just, it, you know, nothing ceases to amaze me, but this is where we're at, people. Uh, no fat cattle trade yet. Uh, just like typical week, uh, your Packers are going to wait as long as they can and hope that the board breaks on Friday. Uh, it didn't break. Uh, it opened up higher on Thursday. I thought it would after Juneteenth being off and, and all the positive signs. And it did open up Thursday higher but it couldn't hold it. Uh, it, it finally just uh, sunk back down. But uh, on Friday, uh, your Packers are going to have help from the cattle on feed report trying to uh, kill the board, but the cattle on feed report don't come out till after the board closes. So it's going to be an interesting two or three hours there to see what goes on. But the Northern Plains guys are still got their, their boots stuck in at $2 a pound live and 315 dressed. I think it's going to take a lot to knock them off of it. I think they'd be uh, content holding the cattle another week uh, to, to have to take less money than that. Of course, the Southern Plains, who knows? Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. They're so far back, they can't even really smell the tracks anymore. But Cattle on Feed report comes out uh, here on Friday afternoon, 2 o'clock Central. On feed numbers as of uh, June the 1st, they've got them at 99.2% of a year ago's report. Uh, that's the average of the analyst guess. Placements for May are set at 99.4. And marketings, which, uh, you know, the marketing surprised us last cattle on feed report. You know, they've got these, uh, these chain speeds ground down to nothing, and we're still having these huge marketings. Uh, in comparison of a year ago and they've got them over 100% again with marketing's estimated at 100.1. Uh, 
Uh, we haven't paid a lot of attention to this cattle on feed report. It'll probably be one that, that sneaks up and bites us on the butt. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it looks to be fairly supportive if the numbers come in uh, anywhere close to where the analysts say they are. But big rains, huge, huge rains all over the central part of the United States. Uh, you know, even up in the, in, the, in the Midwest, in Nebraska and in Iowa, uh, in Missouri and Kansas, uh, you even get down uh, South Texas is having huge, huge rains. Uh, trying to catch up from the um, lengthy year uh, in a row drought that they've had. Uh, even Rio Dos in New Mexico where they had the big fires. Uh, the, the big fires were followed by flooding rains and then when the rains left the fires were still going. How do you like them apples? But uh, you know I was up in uh, Oklahoma Panhandle on Tuesday uh, at the Feeder Flash Beaver Clash in Beaver, Oklahoma as I was pulling out of the parking lot uh, at uh, Beaver County Stockyards, and one raindrop hit my windshield and then it went right back to blowing 40 miles an hour with dust. But I was listening to local radio there uh, in, the, in the Oklahoma Panhandle area and they said that they had uh, like a 30-40% chance of a pop-up shower. And, uh, and I, I kind of thought, yeah, right, I bet they don't even get that. But uh, after I left there on Tuesday night, it rained five and a half inches in Beaver, Oklahoma. It rained over seven inches in Guymon and in Goodwill and in Texoma, Oklahoma. Uh, places that it, that it never rains. Huge, huge, huge rains. Still raining all over the Texas Panhandle. So it's, it's been pretty nice uh, with, with some rains in the central part of the United States where the bulk of our cattle production is found and feeding there too but uh, you know talking about uh, the feeder flash beaver clash uh, beaver county stockyards as you know uh, they're a big promoter and they do a lot of it here with us on the feeder flash you know, on DV auction and on uh, national beef wire uh, we were at LMA conference uh, last week and talked about a lot talked to a lot of sale barns about uh, either putting in DV auction broadcasting or adding it to what they already have uh, Get you on the A team here. If you want some market uh, promotion guys, that's what we're all about and I, I can't help but think that some of the barns that do the most promotion with us are having uh, their best years ever uh, including Beaver County Stockyards uh, Beaver, Oklahoma there uh, it hasn't been that many years ago they weren't selling uh, 40,000 cattle there. Uh, I talked to Lane Conkle on Wednesday and he said that uh, that this coming uh, Tuesday in Beaver, Oklahoma they will per, uh, surpass 100,000 heads sold there for the calendar year and the year's only half over. So that's going to be a huge, huge year for them. Of course, Joplin Regional Stockyards uh, you know, the, the last several months, you know, it's nothing for them to have 12, 13, 15, 16,000. They do a lot of uh, promotion here on the Feeder Flash, National Beef Wire and DV Auction. And then my buddy, uh, uh, Tato Medina, down at Santa Teresa, New Mexico. Tell you what, he just, he just started here a couple of years ago. Uh, he got to uh, uh, the, the total amount of cattle uh, that he could hold there. Uh, and, uh, and and continued to run there at capacity for several weeks. Now he's running two sales a week capacity. So I can't help but think it's not just a coincidence that that's going on. If you've got an auction market, if you got a sale barn, if you want to uh, get some promotion going here, uh, get in with us and let's go. Uh, talking about uh, this weekend, I'm going to be uh, at a, at a uh, presentation. I'm going to be giving a presentation at an event that I've been looking forward to for a long time. It's going to be in Audubon, Iowa. You guys can still go. It's tomorrow. It's Saturday, the 22nd. Uh, it's going to be a 5 o'clock social and a 6 o'clock supper in Audubon, Iowa at the Audubon uh, Cattlemen's Group there. It's their summer social. It's going to be at the rec center there in Audubon. 
they are asking $20 for the steak sandwich, but that seems pretty reasonable. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to a good time there. They said they were looking uh, for a pretty good crowd to come. But if you guys are in, in, the, in the area and you want to come, you can come to Audubon, Iowa, uh, to the Summer Social, and I'll be giving a presentation there. Hope to see you guys. Uh, hoping to have a nice social gathering there and talk a little bit about uh, uh, competitive trade. But uh, if uh, if you guys can, can make it, please do. I've never been to Audubon, but I'm pretty sure that's a place you can drive as fast as you want to drive. Isn't that right? So I guess I'll have my my, uh, my three-quarter ton up there and I'll see how fast I can get to Audubon, Iowa. Uh, all coming up here uh, next Friday is going to be, uh, or Saturday, I guess, Coffeeville Stockyards Blue Stem Special. Uh, the video sale is going to be at the Crossbell Ranch in Copen, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm not going to be giving a presentation there. I'm going to be uh, receiving the, the online bids through DV Auction for that uh, 20,000 head grass cattle special, June the 29th. Uh, they're going to have dinner at 4.30 and a sale at 5 o'clock uh, next weekend uh, in Copen, Oklahoma at uh, the, the, the Crossbell Ranch for the Blue Stem Special of Coffeeville Stockyards. We always promote the sale barns. That's what we do here. It's the time of the month for us to name the Y-Tex Market of the Month. Now, every month we name uh, a sale barn market, an auction market that's doing a really good job for their customers. And, uh, and, and this particular market does year-round uh, but it just seemed like it was time to give them a little bit of a recognition for that. But uh, your market of the month, Whitex market of the month this month is Callaway Livestock Center in Kingdom City, Missouri. Uh, Jack Harrison there, uh, he's a friend of mine. He is, he, is got, he is really aggressive and I mean going and beating the bushes and getting the cattle in there and getting them sold really, really well. He's been having some excellent cow specials there once a month on a Thursday night. Uh, but it hasn't been long ago that he, he took the reins totally uh, from, from J.P. Harrison and uh, David Means there. Uh, but uh, he's been around that market his whole life. But he is running that market and doing one hell of a job. Congratulations to Callaway Livestock Center, Kingdom City, Missouri. Let's talk about your board on Thursday, right after the Juneteenth uh, break, but June live cattle futures were up 40 cents at 187.07. August was up 45 cents at 182.55. Your back months were down a nickel to down 50 cents. So, uh, you know, it was still a decent day there. Your nearbys trying to uh, close the gap on that big basis ever so slightly. I mean, it's going to be huge, uh, but your back months a little bit of pressure, but not too bad. How about feeder cattle futures? August uh, contracts down 12 cents at 259.82. Well, uh, we're starting to creep our way closer to August, but uh, we're still in June, guys. So uh, that thing can go every which way but loose for another couple months yet. September feeder cattle up a nickel at 261.17. Your back months were down from 10 cents to 77 cents. Uh, Chicago Board of Trade corn futures for July up one and a half cent a bushel at 441 and a quarter. Beans up five and a half cents a bushel at 1160 and three quarters. Kansas City hard red winter wheat up a half cent a bushel at 592 and a half. Fat cattle trade, basically nothing. Uh, they, they had 300 head sell negotiated in Iowa from 192 to 197. They've only had 600 trade in Iowa altogether. Now, normally by this time of the week, they would have had several thousand. Nebraska has not traded a hoof. Uh, Kansas sold one load of cattle. Northern Kansas dressed price at 310, which would be pretty optimistic there. And Texas hasn't traded any. Uh, didn't see any significant fat cattle auctions on Thursday to talk about. But, you know, I've told you the deal. Northern Plains is dug in at $2.00. In 315, uh, the Southern Plains will be somewhere behind there, probably a foot behind. Uh, box beef cutout values were higher, uh, mostly mostly in the afternoon session, but 
Choice cuts up 217 at 322.87. Selects up 114 at 304.40. Slaughter 481,000 through the first four days of the week. That's 8,000 less than last week. 24,000 less than the same week a year ago. But our marketings are still over 100%. I don't know. You tell me. But actual slaughter information come back for the week ending June the 8th. Had your average dressed steer carcass weight at 918 pounds, which sounds huge, but it's six pounds lighter than the previous report. So uh, not, not sure how significant that will be. We'll see if that continues. Talk about what else is going on. Livestock Risk Services, that's Dakota Moss there, headquarters out of the exchange building at the Oklahoma National Stockyards. I uh, saw him quite a bit there late last week at the LMA convention wanted me to remind you that it is open season through the end of this month. Uh, that's a transfer period where you can change your LRP agent if you want to. It's pretty seamless, especially if you go on to his new, more interactive website at livestockriskservices.com. You can go on there and fill out an application. Uh, you, you can uh, see strike prices. You can check and see what it's gonna cost you uh, to protect yourself. But if you want to get switched over uh, to Dakota Moss or one of his agents listed here, he's got some really good people on there. If you'd like to get that done, you got about 10 days to get it done, guys, because once you hit to July 1st, you're stuck. Let's talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction. Late in the day on Thursday, sitting at 255.10, that was up a dollar and 11 cents. Pretty tight in there. Uh, with the latest CME cash feeder cattle index, which was 255.47. Uh, big sale coming up Monday is Joplin Regional Stockyards Yearling Special. And you're thinking, my gosh, they just had a big sale Monday and then they had that value added sale on Thursday. Uh, and now they're going to have a big yearling special. Yes, 10 to 12,000 head, expecting at least 150 straight loads of yearlings, guys. Wow. You can, you can view and bid that sale and all the sales at Joplin on dvauction.com. Uh, look at your sales on Thursday. Uh, well, the first one to look at is Joplin's value added special there. Uh, a lot of our Kansas sales have, have either pulled back or closed down completely here this month with, uh, with the wheat harvest going on. Uh, but Joplin had 5,350 head for the value added special. Uh, the market reporter there uh, called the steers uh, with, with a premium to Monday's market, which it could be part of the market because it's higher every day than it was the day before. But he saw premiums uh, as much as $15, especially on lighter weights because they've had that, uh, that health program on them. Heifers were more uneven, uh, but I, the biggest quote that I saw come out of that drop in value added special was on some bigger feeding steers, 220 head weigh to 837 and bring 261 at Joplin Regional Stockyards. I'm going to give you several individual quotes from all over to kind of ponder on over the weekend. How about Clarinda Livestock Auction in Clarinda, Iowa? These are the thermal steers, 70 head of them, weigh 852 and bring 264 on Thursday. How about Paris, Kentucky Stockyards? Uh, I, I've talked a lot about Paris Stockyards over the over the years, but uh, I tell you what, had a good visit there uh, with Jeremy Wigglesworth, uh, the manager, barn manager there. Uh, he, he and I see things kind of eye to eye there, or we, or we did there at the Paddock Club. Uh, somehow, somehow that worked. But tell you what, they sold some heifers about as high as you'd find anywhere in the country at Paris Kentucky Stockyards. There was 82 heifers. Weighed 640, bring 282.50. And that reminds me that I may have misquoted uh, Mason Winters' uh, heifers and called them steers on, uh, on, on, on Thursday's report, but I'll tell you what, I do the best I can. How about El Dorado Livestock Auction in El Dorado, Kansas? You would have thought this would have been uh, midsummer, but it's early summer in El Dorado, Kansas. They sell 131 steers. Weigh 926 at 260 and a quarter. <coughs> Excuse me. How about Bluegrass Stockyard South 
in Stanford, Kentucky. 64 steers weighed 707 and bring 298.95 through the ring. And you said, no, they don't sell them uh, nickels through the ring. They do at Bluegrass Stockyards. They squeeze every nickel out of them. And, uh, and that was confirmed by Jay Romine there, my buddy that sells for them. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Thursday, your Macrosin no BS top quote for the day, come out of Valentine Livestock Market, uh, way up there in Valentine, Nebraska. It was Bob Simmons Black Angus steers there coming right off grass. 133 steers, green steers weighed 852 and bring 282. That's your feeder flash for Friday.